Alrighty, y'all. Welcome back to the Ellis Mowers channel. Uh, if you've been following me the past few videos, you've seen I've been on kind of a little push mower stint uh, with this Cub Cadet. And uh, I'm in the middle of a Troy built project. Um, but you will see that completed before you see this video. It's just I try and make sense of everything for y'all in terms of making videos where I'm not going back and forth, back and forth on different mowers finish them, um, post them, just kind of in the same sequence so that it makes sense to y'all. So while I'm waiting on the parts for the Troy built and uh, the engine over there, I'm going to put uh, some work into this lawn boy. It came as a lot of three free push mowers that I got from somebody that was just going to throw them out. Um, and well, as a I've already made I've already made over hundred dollars on it. Um, just gotta sell them in the spring. Uh, one of them was a nice newer yard machine, so it just needed a little bit of encouragement to get running with that overhead valve Briggs. Um, a quick aside, it's not enough to make a video on. I've got this Murray push mower here. It's a 21 inch with the 300 series Briggs. It's one of those that it's made by MTD. It has a slightly bent shaft. Um, and I'm always a little sketchy with selling mowers that have bent shafts on them. And I mean, I took a sledgehammer and um, straightened out the shaft as good as I could. It still vibrates just a little bit. However, the blade is pretty straight on it and it's not vibrating your hands off. Um, I learned of somebody yesterday that had their mower stolen. It's like a community garden and uh, you know they pretty much rely on donations and funds so instead of selling this mower I'm going to give this mower to them so that they have something to cut grass with again it vibrates a little bit it doesn't vibrate really enough to to be unbearable and it'll be a perfect little mower for them especially once you get it in the grass um, it's not gonna be vibrating as bad um, so you know hopefully it's going to somebody that'll help it or it'll help out somebody um, again it's not not selling it so just giving away to them figure that's the best option um, I like to save what I can and uh, help out when I can so uh, let's move on to this lawn boy um, I guess back in September of 2019 around that time I worked on one that was almost exactly like this in a lot better shape though it just had the top jet clogged up just had to unclog the top jet this one's got a lot more problems than that uh, this is a Kohler six and a half horsepower or excuse me six and a half foot pound torque 149 cc Kohler engine it has the smart choke on it so it's auto choke uh, so far I have seen that the mower is very dirty and it has been run, or the air filter is off of it. I don't have the air filter cover for it. Now, the question lies is, did this thing get run without the air filter for an extended period of time? Hopefully it didn't, because if it did, the engine's probably trash with no compression or low compression. And uh, be as good as uh, just taking the engine off and uh, saving it. The blade, the blade is actually sharp on it, so I'm not gonna have to touch the blade on it. The re the rear drive self propel. This is a self propel. Um, I think the cable and stuff works on it. We'll find out. Looks like it does. Um, the issue is there's a bunch of dirt in the wheels from where this thing has been sitting. So um, it's hard to push. So the first thing I'm going to do, maybe after trying to uh, see if I can get this thing to start, which I have not been able to do yet. I kind of toyed around with it a little bit earlier. It uh, doesn't look like I'm getting any spark out of the spark plug, so I might take the spark plug out and clean it. Uh, we'll take it. I'll give you all a look at that. But uh, we'll uh, 
take these wheels off and uh, clean them up so that they roll freely. Um, again, just needs a little bit of freeing up. I'm glad that the cables are in good shape. I'm glad that the deck is in good shape too. Um, so we'll, like I said, we'll see what we got. I'm going to work on the spark plug. We'll give that a look and we'll see if we can get any spark out of this thing. Alright, spark plug's out. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that very well. It's mighty, mighty dirty. Um, the engine, I, I wish I had shown it on camera. The engine does have compression. Um, you feel it in the, uh, you feel it in the rope, so, you know, it does have compression on it. I'm going to throw this into the vise. And I'll tell you one thing, by the time this video airs, these mowers will probably be out of here. But I cannot wait to get these riding mowers out of here. We'll just throw this in a vise. Do, 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 do. There we go. I'll grab my wire brush for the drill. We'll clean this off and uh, see if we can get any spark out of this uh, this plug. I'm hope, like I said, I'm hoping that the I'm hoping that it still runs because the air filter covers and stuff has been off of it. But we shall see. Catch y'all in just a second. All right, we got it on the bench here. Um, I'm gonna take the engine cover off and the pull rope off. Uh, we're going to check the condition of the coil because I'm still not getting any spark from that um, spark plug. So, We know the pull rope works because we tried to start it. Uh, spark plug is out of it, so I'm going to take my vice grip here, or my little clamp. This control box over here that allows the spark to come through. Um, hopefully it's not that that's gone bad. I think that... Make sure that it's not touching. I think it's pulling far enough. Just seeing how this open this works. Oh, you hear that switch in there? Hear that switch? This mechanism's not pulling far enough back to enact that switch to turn the mower on. 
So this cable is a little bit worn. Um, and I'll have to adjust it, or I don't know if I can adjust this. You know, adjust the self propel. I don't know if I can adjust this cable here. Uh, but I could knot it and make it work. So, let me do this for the time being as a temporary solution. I'm going to get a pair of pliers. Oh, my garage is a wreck. I say that every time. It's mostly because I have all these rider, riders in here still. Or I guess the appropriate term is lawn tractor since the engines in the front. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, let's see if I can get this spring out of here. I don't know if I can be able to get the spring out of there. Uh, this isn't as easy as a Briggs. Let me see what I can muster here to get this spring out. Because that's really keeping me from being able to do anything. Let's see if I can pull some vice grips or something on it. I don't know. Uh, let me troubleshoot and I'll tell you what I ended up doing here. Alright, so for the time being, I found a zip tie and I was able to like tie up the switch into the on position. I'm going to throw some lubricant on this cable to see if I can get it freed up enough to where it will actually work properly without me having to. Sometimes I'll kink the cable just to give it some a shorter run. Um, that usually fixes it, but I don't want to quite do that yet, not knowing the um, extent of the damage or if this thing even will even have spark after I do this. So, I just tied the switch up. Again, I don't have any gas in it or anything, so it's not going to, like, crank up and take off on me or anything like that. I just want to see if it will actually start. And if it does, we'll take a look at the carburetor and all that good stuff and move forward with it. That's really the goal here. So, let me button everything back up, lube up that cable a little bit. I'll actually put the cable back on it after I lube it up and uh, see if we have spark. Alright so back on here um, as you can see I've got the zip tie on the switch there so it is tied in the on position like I just showed you. Uh, let's see if I can show you all this with the spark plug. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it does now have spark. So, give me just a second and throw some salt fluid in it, and let's see if this thing will crank up for us. And one warning, obviously don't run it like this because you take all the safety ability to turn it off and stuff like that away so this is just temporary it's just going to hit hopefully and it will uh, turn on got to put the plug back in it first so Tighten it down. I don't 
really like how loose that plug bit is on there, so I'm probably going to take some pliers and tighten it up. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if we got fire on this thing. That's a good thing. Let's see if I can get the self to work real quick too. running on starter fluid at this point but so we know the self propel works we know that it will start and crank next steps I'm gonna take the wheels off of this thing hopefully it won't be too difficult I think it's either a half or a nine sixteenths not a nine sixteenths It is a half. So I'm going to take the rear wheels off of it. Let's see how, I just think they got a bunch of dirt in them. I'm just going to clean them out real quick. And we'll also take the carburetor off. So here's the right wheel. You can see some dirt and stuff caked in there, which is why it was semi-difficult to turn. Uh, and we also got some right here on the uh, self-propelled gear. So... Uh, a little bit of dirt. I'll just beat the dirt out of it. Shouldn't be too difficult to do. Just dirt caked on in there. But I'm going to work on this. Get the rest of this dirt uh, beat out of it. I'll lube it up a little bit. And uh, also... Uh, lube up the inside of this gear right here uh, this washer get it to where the dirt's not really causing any issues with it either and uh, we'll do the other side and I'll catch back up with y'all when I get to the carburetor all right we the wheels are fixed um, again they just need some run time and they'll be back to their usual freewheeling self um, I always like showing how to take off a Kohler carburetor because they're a little bit more involved than say a Briggs and Stratton so I'm gonna pop you all over here a couple of 10 millimeters if you use it and you can use the impact just be careful I would recommend not using it to put it back on Third 10 millimeters right up here. Oh, it was a 10. Stand by. It is. I just need to go to ratchet because that impact was too big. Spacer it goes in between, goes on the back, it goes on the back here, right? I don't know if y'all can see it, right? There it goes in that spacer. That's where the spacer goes. Be sure to keep that as well allows us to get the air filter off and then we pull the um, breather tube off of the air filter there we go. and 
now I have the ability to pull this carb off. First though, we have to pull this throttle cable back. These are complicated little carburetors. We just pull this throttle cable back and push up on it. It gets it out of that little groove there. And then you just take the little return spring off. It looks like this is splined over here. Let me show you. Oh, I've on many of these auto chokes, but it looks like it is splined right here. So I think I should just be able to pull it off of the splines. Again, I don't want to mess anything up on this. That has to be the best way to go, though. I'm going to grab a little bit of encouragement here. Yeah, that's the way it goes. You just pull it off the splines there. It's just being a little... Stubborn because of there we go. So we're off the splines. That's the little uh, that's the choke arm for this, which is binding up right there because of that. But that's the choke arm. I don't know if I want to take it off because I don't want to mess it up, but everything should be. I've got the gas line here as well. We get some pliers. We'll take the gas line off. Oh, where are my good pliers at? There they are. These are your friend right here, these 45 degree angle pliers, especially when taking fuel lines and stuff off. Do not know how I worked on mowers before I got these things. Golly. Fuel line is on there, I'll tell you that much. to save the fuel line because it's actually in decent shape. I don't think I did though. That's alright. The fuel line don't hurt nobody. Do fuel line. Should pull off at this point, shouldn't it? Oh, this spline's got to pull through this. Unless I. So you have Allen's here. What I'm going to do, or star bits, whatever, um, I'm going to get my star bits, and I'll take those two screws off. Unless the splines will come through. Oh, the splines come through. I was going to take those Allen bits off, but that got us off. This is a complicated little carburetor right here. <laughs> That's why I like showing you how to take it off. Um, and I will get my little uh, carb cleaning tray here and we will uh, work on looking inside it it's just a uh, 10 millimeter bolt that will allow you access under here uh, probably take this little tube off or just kind of bend it out of the way for the moment um, like I said I don't know how bad this carb is on the inside it might be all right but well, as bad as the mower is, I was going to check before I even put gas in it. So, uh, let me work on that, and I'll catch back up with you all in just a second. Well, so we have some corrosion in it. 
Nothing really that's detrimental though. As you can see. Uh, taking the needle and seat off. The corrosion only really reached right here in the bottom of the bowl. And really I can beat I can beat most of this out. And just kind of mess with the bottom down there and just kind of scrape that out with the screwdriver. Apart from that, I'll throw a little sea foam in it in the tank, replace the fuel line. Um, throw a little carb clean into the jet there. And oh yes, the upper jet on these things. Check them. They are a Phillips head. You just take that screw right there off and it allows you to get to the upper jet. A lot of times you can start them or you can run them, but you can't start them when the upper jet is clogged. So if you have that issue, upper jet, screw out. So I'm going to work on this carburetor. I'm going to scrape it with a little bit of a wire brush, a little bit of a screwdriver, and uh, clean it out with some carb clean, and I'll catch back up with y'all when I get it cleaned. So I misspoke just a second ago. There is this screw that you have to take out. Um, it's not a jet screw. I guess it's just kind of a holding screw. But the jet actually goes as this piece. Oops. This piece right here. I'm just to take a screwdriver and pry it up. And uh, I need two hands for it. Take a screwdriver and pry it up. And there you go. This jet is very, very, very small. And I'll show you. Very small right there. Um, it allows the carburetor to uh, I guess it allows it to fire. It just kind of helps. It's part of the starting mechanism. Um, so, I just wanted to clear that up. I'm going to give this thing a little carb bath and then we will catch back up. So, I uh, learned something new every day. So, I had a, the fuel line off. I'll measure it and put a new one on. But, check this out. They actually put an inline fuel filter on these Kohlers. It's kind of neat. Um, what happens is it actually goes up in the tank like this just like that and you put the fuel line over it that's pretty cool um, I got the fuel line on it bolt the air filter cover back on all the passageways look like they were clear in the carburetor uh, we'll throw gas in it see if this thing will run for us it does have oil in it oil is dark obviously I will change the oil whenever I uh finish servicing it but learn a lot on this Kohler another thing to point out is I was trying to figure out the deal with the screw here the one that you have to take off to get to the top side jet that screw actually it acts as a throttle stop but another thing it acts as is you take it off you take the screw off loosen the screw up that allows you to get this throttle linkage out easier so a couple little tips and tricks that I just learned wanted to share um, I'll button this back up with the fuel line and uh, we'll see if we get this thing started and I almost forgot about the switch here um, told you we finally had spark y'all saw it run put the fuel line in and I put this clear line in it because it's a little bit smaller than the fuel line that I have um, and the way that the way that this fuel line is fitted and routes through these uh, little rings here I figure that would be a better option um, I've done that to many mowers and it works just fine um, so I don't know if you can hear the click What I did is I kinked the cable up top here. Um, I do that on a lot. It'll stretch out over time a little bit. I do that on a lot of mowers. Um, it's not in a bind or anything. It's not really stressing on the handle any. So um, we'll roll with that. Uh, let me get it off of my little stand here. 
We're going to, I have some good faith in this. We're going to put some gas in it. And uh, throw a little sea foam in it while I'm at it too. And uh, we will see if we have a runner here. And if we do, then I'll order an air filter and an air filter cover for it, which will be, it'll probably be every bit of $20.00. But this mower will probably fetch anywhere between 120 and 140 once I fix it. Especially with it being self-propelled and a Lawn Boy brand with the Kohler engine on it. Um, so it'll be well worth the you know investment. Because right now I still have zero dollars in it. So, uh, you know. You always got to throw a little bit of money at some stuff to make it work. Let me get the cover back on. Uh, and then we'll give it a, give it a test run here. Now I put gas in it. I don't think the needle's seating on it because it's leaking out here. What I'm going to do... Oh boy, it is just hemorrhaging now. See if I can crank it and get it going. And uh, see if it'll seat itself, if you know what I mean. Sometimes they do that. see if it's still hemorrhaging out the carb. Let's give it a second here. It's starting to spew up. Yeah, it's leaking. Neil and Steve are leaking on that carburetor. Darn. Carb looked real clean. From the looks of it, I don't know why it's doing that. Well, we know what it we know what it's doing.
Let me throw a little air into it and see if I can get it to seat. Sometimes if I throw some compressed air into it, it'll seat. Um, and then I will um, catch back up with y'all in a minute, but I think we're going to have to at least get back in this carburetor one more time to see if I can get it fixed because it is leaking pretty bad out the top there. And uh, that's definitely not acceptable. It's flooding the motor. So uh, let's see what I can do here. All right, so I wanted to show y'all, if I can, I've got the fuel turned off now. I'm gonna turn the fuel on, you'll see it dripping. I'm not really concerned about the paint on this thing. You'll see it start dripping, dripping, dripping. Close the float. Closes it, right? Dripping, dripping, dripping. Close it. Right? So, what it's doing, I don't know. I gotta stop it from dripping now. So the needle and float are working. I just don't know if it's the float or I don't know if the float is quite making it up to the top there so that the needle can seat. That's kind of I think where the snag is coming in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it back on the way that it originally was onto this uh, carburetor. And I'll see if it leaks again. If it leaks this time, we're not going to worry with it. We're just going to spend the 10 bucks and put a carburetor on it. But if this does work, hey, it saves us 10 bucks, right? All right, so this started pouring out as soon as I unclamped gas tank, gas line. And so we're just going to go the route of putting a new carburetor on it call it a day we know our problems will be solved with that um, and that a customer will have a happy well, it'll be a happy customer with a lawn boy we'll say that much uh, so carburetor air filter air filter cover coming up all right so it is parts day um, they're not this is not the exact carburetor for this but it should work this doesn't have provisions drilled in the top of it for all of these um, accessories on this carburetor I should have researched a little bit better but it will work it's got everything and like the where the provisions and everything to put stuff in it um, So we're gonna I'm gonna work on that off camera. All I'm gonna be doing is tapping some threads uh into this carburetor. And this one's got a little thing that juts out of it here. Uh for I guess it's because when you look at it like this, I guess it's just it's kinda like a vent because this one's actually missing it. Uh so that I'll be doing that. I've got the new cover for it the new air filter for it which ended up being about $35 again I have nothing in the mower except for the parts this is at least a hundred and twenty dollar mower as it sits after I get all this finished so I've got this carburetor off and some star bits and all I gotta do is take those star bits off it gets the accessories off there for me and then I am going to put the put them on to this carburetor and um, put it on and we'll test it out like I said all I'm gonna do is where the indents are there is I'm gonna drill them out tap some threads and we should be good to go um, so yeah let me go ahead and work on that and uh, we'll give this thing a good test so I have this device here that I guess provides some sort of pulsation but it's not a fuel pump. You, is it like an EGR? I'm not sure. But you can hear it. It's like a little bitty pump. Now my question is, this is more of a question because the mower's running fine without it. Is it like some sort of emissions thing that these put on these Kohler engines and whatnot? Because it's, it's attached to the choke arm, but... The choke is working like it should. It is staying open when 
the exhaust is hot and it opens as the exhaust opens and it's running good when I put the load on it with the cell propel even cut it in some grass it's not bogging down or anything so it's I don't think it's a governor related because that's the governor right there if anybody knows exactly what that is let me know again it's not affecting the runability of the mower which is what I'm curious about unless it's some sort of device that um, kind of holds the choke back to, so that it's not blowing as much black smoke I don't know if it's an emissions device or what um, I'm going to do some research as well and I'll show you what I, I'll figure out what I might have found if I can find an owner's manual and a parts diagram before I wrap this video up but I just kind of wanted to share, share that with y'all because the carburetor I got would not allow me and I'm sorry I put it all back together I wanted to test it before I made this portion of the clip I just hooked the choke and everything back the way that it's supposed to and left that off because there was no mounting point on this carburetor. And just for video proof, I'll show y'all that it runs. It is a warm start, but it, it started on the second pull cold. So I'm in the house here and just doing research on what that part is, which is right here. It's a auto choke diaphragm vacuum assembly. This is for the XT675, but still the same concept. Um, and there's your part number if you can see it. So I'm not sure what purpose this serves I did a quick research and I couldn't really find it because there's a slide there's like a slide pin on the or like a sliding area on the actual choke for this rod here and so does it really touch anything it just it does pulse back and forth it uses carburetor pressure but like y'all saw earlier it does start and it runs and I ran it for a good three or four minutes with no issues. I'm going to run it with for about 15 minutes tomorrow. If anybody wants to tell me what this does, please feel free to let me know. Because um, I'm really curious since it's showing no signs of poor running ability at this point. And I'm going to take the air filter off. I'm going to show you what I did with the, um, the choke arm. To, to get the um, butterfly to open and close with this um, Chinese carburetor as well um, tomorrow when I get more daylight. So very interesting. I just wanted to show you that I looked it up and uh, 20 bucks is not too bad um, for the part. But like what purpose does it serve? Please let me know in the comments. So I kind of wanted to show you all the difference in, uh, in this right here and the uh, old carb and the new carb and the one the difference you can see right off the bat is these tabs right here where my uh, pinky finger are they're not on this mower so I don't really have a place to put that uh, diaphragm that I showed y'all and uh, however I was able to drill a couple of holes and tap some eight M832 threads into the left side to mount this carb 
and choke arm and it's moving around because I have the air filter off and so the the carb can open and close the choke there and I'm just letting it rest because what I want to do is I want to cold start it like you will would see so I just wanted to show you that's what I ended up doing with this carburetor it's not the most ideal situation but again I don't know what purpose that diaphragm serves if y'all know please let me know because I know it <clears throat> excuse me it attaches right here and it's probably some sort of uh, I mean it's pressurized obviously because it's a diaphragm but I, the way that it hooks up and I kind of mentioned it last night but it hooks up and it hooks up in, and it slides right here it hooks up like something like uh, this but it just slides on the choke and the spring action is controlled by this because it's a um, under here is a spring to open up the choke as the engine gets warm so again if anybody knows what this diaphragm acts purpose it is I would be very happy to know just to be informed again this thing's gonna run and run like it's supposed to and do all that without the diaphragm by all means I'm not gonna put it back on um, but on the other hand I'm also not gonna sell anybody an unreliable push mower because I tell people well number one I'm not gonna do them wrong and uh, which means I don't want it coming back to me so um, that's kind of the update I'm gonna put the air filter back on I'll go ahead and button everything up and then I've already washed it so or have already washed it it's been so long since I've worked on this thing. I think I did wash it. I'm going to scrape the rest of the grass off of it. And then I'm going to um, uh, have picture time with it if it works. All right. So I got everything on it here. Um, again, I just put the air filter and the air filter cover on it. It's Both of those are new items. They did not come with the mower. Again, I put about $35 in parts on this thing. Between the air filter uh, and the air filter cover and the carburetor um, so what I'm going to do now again I don't have the diaphragm on it I've done the whole spiel you'll probably don't want to hear it again I'm going to number one see if it cold starts and number two I'm going to let it run for a little bit and see if there are any issues that arise with it um, the choke lever seem to be closed enough to where it will start again it might take two or three pulls hopefully only that many and we'll see what happens. Or maybe just one. <laughs> So we'll let it warm up here. It's probably running a little rich right now because the choke lever is the mower is starting to warm up. So the choke lever will be moving here in just a second. change the oil on it um, the oil was clean however I think I got a little bit of gas in the crankcase whenever I was having the issues with it Stop 
in Clinton, that's good. It's about two minutes in, so the muffler should be open. I hear it hunting just a little bit there. We'll let it run for a little bit and we'll see what happens with it. Alright, so we're about 10 minutes in here. The thing's running great. I just took it up the uh, driveway and back just to see if putting the self propel load changed anything. Not really. Um, the governor's picking it up whenever the load comes on it. And it's doing like it's supposed to. Running really good. Running really good, by the way. Um, let's see if I can restart it with y'all on me here. It always restarts on the first pull, and I mean, it has that little bit of smoke that comes out from the choke lever. Alright. It's not smoking or knocking, just that little choke smoke coming out with that extra fuel on it. Um, so I'm going to call this done, and I'll call it done done whenever I come out here tomorrow and uh, cold start it again. I just want to make sure that I didn't mess up anything on the choke lever whenever I cranked it up. Uh, and if I did, I'll let you know, and well, this will be a to be continued. However, it's looking like we're in good shape because it's starting and restarting. I let the choke lever fully freely again with the with the a change like that to the engine taking off that diaphragm i want to make 100 percent sure that it's good before i sell it um this mower will likely be sold almost certainly by the time you see this video because i'm about a a month ahead so this video will be dropping early april i'm in early march now so i appreciate y'all watching um got another lawn boy going again the no spark issue wasn't a spark plug, it was that switch in there. So that's a big thing to remember. If you have a no spark on a Kohler, check that switch to make sure that it's firing and that your cable isn't stretched. And it's not firing that switch, that uh, the grounding switch. So I'll give you all one last look around here. Again, got the mower for free. Put about 35 bucks in it with a carb. Gave it a good cleaning. The blade was already sharp on it. Um, of course, the air filter and the air filter cover will sell it for at least 120, or I'll say at least 100. 100. I'll probably throw it on the marketplace for about 120. But the Kohler should sell quick. People like Kohlers for whatever reason. Um, push mower ones are okay. Uh, I've heard terrible things about the Kohler Courage riding mower, which I'm sure will come around some point in the year with all the riding mowers that I've got there. Anyways, thank y'all for watching. Uh, if y'all like stuff like this, push more videos, ride more videos, uh, lawn and garden videos in general, Ellis Mowers 09 will give you real-time updates of what I'm doing on Instagram and Facebook before the videos drop. And, or you can just search Ellis Mowers uh, in the search bar of both of those respective places. Or you can catch me right here on YouTube. Thank you all again for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.